guys, I hope everybody's doing awesome, and I hope everybody had a chance to break out their Arduino and play around with some arrays and some code. Now, in the last tutorial, I alluded to the fact that there is another, perhaps more efficient way to write this program. And this is the same program, by the way, that we did last time. And we see here we have, I mean, there's some spaces and stuff, but 38 lines of code, okay? And some of you already know this, you already know about the for loop. But this time, for those who don't, or those who need a refresher, I am going to replace a lot of this code with a couple of for loops. And for loops and arrays, guys, are a match made in heaven. Now, the circuit is the same. Schematic is the same, so nothing's changed there. So we don't have to, to go over that again. If you want to go and look at the schematic and build the circuit, go back to the last video and do that. But we're going to get started, and we're going to go ahead and replace a bunch of lines of code with a few lines of code, and we're going to start here in setup. Now this, we're just going to leave this alone. We're still declaring an array with five elements, five bytes, and we're initializing it for pins two, three, four, five, and six. Now here, last time, we used the pin mode function a bunch of times to set the pins as outputs. But this time, we're going to do things a little bit smarter. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to comment out all these lines of code and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna add a space and let's see we want to use a for loop so we start with the word for and I'm gonna use bytes again because they don't take up a lot of space and we're not counting the 10,000 we're counting to five so and yes you can initialize a variable in a for loop by the way so we're gonna say byte i equals zero we're gonna set it equal to zero semicolon i needs to be less than let's see okay we have zero one two three four so that's five elements let me not hold the shift key down and we're going to take i and increment it every single time we go through the loop now customarily when you're writing for loops you use the letter i and you don't have to use a letter i you can call this anything you want to you can call this really cool or, or something it doesn't really matter but we're going to stick with convention and call this it's just an indexing counter variable we're going to call it i okay so we need to have a curly brace when we get into the loop and we're just going to go ahead and copy this and we only need to write this once and instead of the number zero, we need the index. We're going to put the variable i. So what this is going to do is each time the for loop is going to start at zero, start at the first element and iterate, and then set these pins, all five of them, to high. And this is just really two lousy lines of code instead of what? Here we had, what, five lines of code? So we could see already we're saving a lot of, a lot of, a lot of space, a lot of code. Okay, so that's going to take care of making pins 2 through 6 outputs. So let's go over here and see what we could do with this. Here we use the digital write function and the delay function 349 times. Okay, that's a little much. Maybe not quite that much, but we, we use it a lot. And I'm going to try to do a similar thing here. Let's go ahead and... We're going to start by commenting all this out because we're not going to use this code. This is bloated code. All right, guys. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do another for loop. And I'm going to do another byte. I'm going to call this J because J is another standard variable name that you use in for loop. So if you have more than one for loop, I, J, K are all standards. Again, you could call it what you want to. And you know, I, I could technically, I could call this I again, but because these variables have a scope that isn't global, and, and scope is kind of an advanced topic that we're going to tackle later, but to avoid confusion and to avoid making possible errors, I'm not going to use I again. This time I'm going to use J as my indexing counter variable. And that's perfectly legit. We're going to go ahead and set j equal to 0. j needs to be, let's see, less than 5 again. And then we need to increment j. 
And by now, you guys should understand what a for loop does and, and how they work. So if you need to review, go back and review. But we're just going to go ahead and I need both of these lines of code here. Copy it. Paste it. The uncomment. And I'm going to replace the number zero with the variable j. Let me make sure I learn how to type because I'm not that good at it. Full disclosure, I'm not the best typist. Okay, so this is going to step through and it's going to turn all the LEDs on with a half second delay in between each. So we replaced here, I don't know how many, two, four, six, eight, ten lines of code with just three lines of code. Not a bad savings. So now we want to go ahead and we want to turn them off. And let's use another for loop. B-Y-T-E byte. And I'm going to call this one K. I-J-K, standard traditional variables that people use with for loops and arrays, just as indexing. And this time, we're, wait, wait, we're turning them off. So we turn them all on, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we want to turn them off in reverse order that we turn them on. So we need to be careful here. So instead of starting at 0, I want to start at 4. Okay, so we want LEDs 1 through 5 to light. And then once they light, they want to go off 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, etc. in a reverse order that they were lit. So we're going to start with K equals 4. And this time, we need to switch around our comparison operator. I'm going to do less than equal 0. And instead of incrementing, we're going to decrement. Again, the minus minus is just a decrement. I know most of the time you're used to seeing the plus plus, but you can also decrement too. I'm just going to copy and paste because, like I said, I'm not a good typist. And I'm going to replace this with the letter K. Delay. And that, that should do it. So let's go ahead and make sure that we didn't make any silly syntax errors. I'm not going to upload the code and run it. I'm just going to verify it first. This isn't a bad habit to get into, guys. Uh, oh, see? Caught an error. Let's see what I did wrong here. I was not declared in this scope. See? Instead of using J, I wrote the letter I. Silly me. So let's go ahead and fix that. And let's try again. Okay, so the code compiled, which means that it's probably going to work. So let's go ahead and upload it. I'm going to click upload. And let's see how this works. Okay, here we go. And we see the LEDs coming on one at a time. And then they're going off one at a time. But wait a minute, something's wrong because it's not, they're not coming on again. It's supposed to repeat over and over again. They're supposed to come on one at a time and then go off one at a time, and then repeat. What, what, what the heck? What kind of mistake could we have made that would actually cause that? 